Welcome back to Seize the Adventure. In today's episode, we are starting off the day by hooking up some of our 12 volt electrical system in our 1997 Dodge Ram B2500 camper van. If you're new here, we've been building out this van for the last couple of months, and I think it's really starting to come together. This is the first day that I have any of my 12 volt system working, and I've tested everything, but I haven't actually hooked it up to the fuse box, so. Today it's hooked up to our little fuse panel that we have and the first thing that we did was test out the lights. So I have these 12 volt lights on a dimmer switch and it makes the van look so complete. I think the combination of the warm LED puck lights as well as the cedar just give this a really cozy cabin like feel. It's really coming together. So the next thing that we are going to be doing is hooking up our max air fan we have up on the roof. It works. So right here, this is the brains of our build that we have going on here. So I haven't showed too much of this yet, but this is our electrical system that we have in the 97 Dodge Ram. And it's a little bit of a mess right now just because we are setting things up. But we do have most of the things labeled out and really organized, I'd say, for a first timer. So essentially, what we have to do is connect this entire mess of red and black wires. This is all of our 12 volt stuff. To sum up the setup a little bit, we have a 200 amp hour AGM battery, 1000 watt inverter, 12 volt fuse panel for all of our various 12 volt appliances. This is a Renogy 200 watt premium kit. I have 200 watts of solar up on the roof. Go check out that video if you're interested. This setup's pretty sweet. It has a little Bluetooth module on there to connect to your phone. So this thing right here is our 12 volt fuse panel. And essentially we need to take connectors and attach them to all these red and black wires. I'll go ahead and create a new video like I had mentioned in draw out diagrams. So if you're interested in how you can set up your electrical system in your camper van, you'll have a direct protocol to follow. <laughs> Took a quick break to make some black bean and rice tacos. Definitely won't be the last tacos eaten in this van. <laughs> Something that I really took into consideration when designing this build was having my electrical system easily accessed just in case I need to repair something or if we want to add to the system if our needs increase. I'm also thinking about adding a small battery operated light to this cabinet just so I can see things a little bit easier. I really enjoyed having this flashlight down here and I think it will make my life easier. So we have two of our 12 volt out of the six available spaces and that is the light and the fan. Let's go test the fan. All right, so the fan is open. We should see it turn on when I press this button. It works. One suggestion that I have if you're going to get a max fan or any type of roof vent is to paint the fan shroud a different color. Definitely leave it white if you enjoy that, but the black fan shroud looks so great. Oh yeah, and the fan works too, so that's good. I would highly suggest using a heat gun for this process. Clearly I used a blowtorch here. It worked just fine for me and clearly I was safe with it. No wood was harmed in the making, so you could also use a lighter. I just decided to use the blowtorch.
So right now we're just wiring up our little USB port. That's gonna hang out on the wall right under our inverter switch and right above our diesel heater. This is gonna be the control panel of the van. I thought this location between the two windows was the perfect spot for the quote unquote control panel for my van. Here we have the inverter switch, which will allow us to turn the refrigerator on and off. Right below that, we have two USB ports for charging various devices. And then on the bottom there, we are going to have our diesel heater, which will act as a thermostat for the van. And it's gonna hang out and look something like that, I guess, or like that, I suppose. Sweet, it's clean. I'll see. Come on, heel. So it's the next day and we're not working on the van today. We're enjoying one of the last days before I potentially start a new full-time job. And yeah, it's one of the few sunny days that we have in Oregon during the winter. So I thought it'd be nice to come out to the local trails and go on a run. Got the Adventure Spaniel with us. Yesterday I installed a couple of things to the plumbing that I'll go ahead and show you later. But we don't have too much more to complete, so in a month or so we'll probably be ready for the maiden voyage. Today is a day I feel grateful to live amongst nature. It's good for the soul. It's good for the soul. So it's the next day, it's about noon. I had an interview this morning and now it's time to continue my productivity and get a couple of things done. One of those things is we need to ship out a couple of orders for Seize the Adventure Co. If you're watching this and you've ordered something from the shop, Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in checking out the store, I'll pop the link up here on the screen as well as you can find it down in the description below. So this is an inside look at our office space where we edit all of our videos and now where we run Seize the Adventure Co. lifestyle brand. So go ahead, please go check out that link. And if you're not interested, that's completely fine. Thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. So this specific order is a beanie and a medium sized hoodie. So we're gonna have to go find a poly mailer that will fit both of these items. I've already made the mistake of shipping out some merchandise in boxes and it's quite expensive to do. So I looked it up online and a lot of people use poly mailers, those kind of bag things that you might get from Amazon or something along those lines. And those seem to be a lot cheaper. So. We'll have to head to Office Depot or something like that and go find some poly mailers to go ship these orders out. Look who it is. He loves going in the car. So I picked out, a, I believe it's a number five poly mailer. A beanie and a hoodie fit perfectly inside of this thing and I think it looks pretty professional. 
So happy about that purchase and I hope my customers are happy with it too. Okay, that's enough. Well, now that we have a little bit of time, let's work on the van, shall we? So yesterday we took out the carpet that we've been saving to actually trace onto more carpet, but I thought, why not try to give it a clean? So I scrubbed it really good and I got all the dirt out. And I think I'm gonna put this exact carpet right back into the van. Now, definitely not in the best shape. As you can see, this carpet used to be this gray color. And from the sun, it got kind of faded to this light grayish green color. Also, it has some rust stains from where the bolts were and just some weird stuff going on with this carpet. Well, we're going to have to trim a good bit of this off to actually be able to fit it into the van. And I think all of this stuff will kind of be hidden and not really notice. The important thing to me is that it's actually clean and it doesn't smell if there's a stain or two. It's probably going to be all right because at the end of the day it's a camper van i'm going to be getting into this van with muddy boots on so who really cares it definitely came out much cleaner it was actually a complete brown color when i took this out so definitely an improvement and if you're wondering why it's sitting up like this i have it kind of set up on this fan to get some airflow around it and whatnot because i got it pretty wet yesterday All right, let's get to work. So something else I was able to complete was mounting this diesel tank. This is for our diesel heater that we're gonna have in the van. And we'll be able to fill it by just opening up this back door, super simple. And then it will be exposed. So we have the diesel tank mounted in the back here. Then the gas line goes straight down into the floor. That gas line then runs all the way over here and then around the wheel well. And as you can see, this is where we have our diesel heater installed. We went with the fuel pump method on the exterior of the van. There's the wire for that. It's important to install the fuel pump of your diesel heater on the exterior of your van. This is just simply so you don't have to listen to it pumping all night long. You can already see some rust on the hardware that they provided. That's what you get for a Chinese diesel heater, but anyways, we have the exhaust that runs to the exterior of the van. See how it's kind of sticking out from the side, yet still somewhat protected. And it's also vertical, so any uh, water can drip out of the hole at the bottom there. This is our air intake that we have mounted here, and then our beloved fuel pump that hopefully isn't too noisy, and everything looks to be holding up pretty well after we've driven this thing. And that diesel heater is mounted under this cabinet in its own compartment. But I do have a big hole in the side there to allow some airflow over to our electrical system here. So I think this came out super clean. I like how hidden the diesel heater is in my van and it's still accessible, which is very nice. And yes, I did not record a video for how I installed my diesel heater. At the end of the day, I don't wanna be liable for an improper install or a diesel heater malfunction. So I just didn't even put a video on YouTube about the diesel heater. There's plenty of them out there. Just type in Chinese diesel heater and you will find one of my fellow YouTube university teachers out there. Now, if I install another diesel heater in the future, I'll definitely be making a full YouTube how-to video on it. But for my first time, keep that off the internet. The diesel heater itself is in this small compartment down here inside of this cabinet and there's a big hole in the back there that leads to our electrical cabinet. So hot air is going to be able to come from this separate compartment into this area and heat our battery in our lower section. 
So we got the front seats removed. We've had this one removed for a while now. Actually, we did that just so we could easily use this as like a walk space. But now we're gonna vacuum this space up and we're going to put the carpet down and then hopefully get our new seats in here. It's getting dark out now, but we got the carpet in and cut, kind of wedged it under some of these uh, pieces that were sticking off of the tongue and groove. And then I'll put some type of trim to kind of finish this edge off. Kind of like this aluminum angle piece that I have as the trim for the garage or the trunk area of my van. I used a plastic material the very first time and that got completely beat up from sliding things in and out. So I think this aluminum will hold up the test of time a little bit longer. So here's seat number one officially installed. They're super clean. I got them on Marketplace for $20 and uh, they were from a Dodge B1500. So the little bit smaller version of this, I believe. But yeah, it came out looking really nice. I just had to swap out the bases with the existing seats. It only took two holes to drill but I like the tan. I think it goes a lot better with the wood and also these seats are just in a little bit better condition. So these are the factory seats and as you can see, they're kind of old sofa style looking. I just don't really like how they look. I think these look more like car seats. We got one of these bases off. As you can see, it was just four bolts pretty easy to get the stock base off. And we need to take the base off of this seat, but it actually has an extra bolt. So with the last seat, I just drilled an extra hole into the previous base and it came out perfect. This is a small modification that's totally worth it. And just like that, we have the new chair with the old base. So this is what it looks like with the two seats in the van. Like I said, this carpet kind of looks a little bit greenish. I don't know, it's a weird color. It's completely fine. I'll probably just get some mats anyway to protect, protect the carpet, really to cover it up, but I think it looks fine for now. But how does it look in here with all the lights on starting to come together? Looks like a finished product almost got the seats in got the carpet in welcome back it's a new day and we're building vans so on the agenda today we are creating some cabinet doors to cover up our water storage spot as well as our main cabinet here and i'm trying I'm trying to decide if I want to do an open face cubby type thing for this area. But for this area, we are doing traditional doors. So let's go see what we got going on. So we have the two doors cut and ready to finish sand, I suppose. Trying to get things cleaned up a bit while we let paint dry. So here are the cabinet doors. These two are gonna be your traditional swing open doors. And this is just a little 
cubby plate essentially that's gonna go on the main cabinet inside of the van. The cubby system is gonna allow for easier accessibility and there's not gonna be any doors in the way. This will also allow us to be able to get into the cabinet even if the doors on the sink cabinet are open. I think that just about wraps up this week's episode. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.